Hi, welcome back to a new episode on Retro Game Revival. So as you may be able to tell here, I've got a TurboGrafx-16 that I've recently purchased. Um, this, it was advertised as not working. Uh, I emailed the, the, the people selling it and they were like, yeah, we have no clue what's wrong with it. So we're going in this one completely no clue what's up with it. Um, the reason I, it took me a couple weeks to get to this is I wanted to buy one of these AV boosters off of uh, the interwebs and you know it just took a while to get here so it's been waiting uh, for this video but before we dive into this uh, I want to you know talk a bit about the the channel itself there's a huge thank you that needs to go out to everyone so recently the channel surpassed 500 subscribers and while that may not sound like a lot to most of you uh, or to some of you to me that means the world uh, i started this channel you know a couple years ago and uh, just with the intent of uploading a video every once in a while on little things that i was working on and this kind of grew and grew and i've been doing more work towards you know 3d printing stuff and visual repairs over actual electronic repairs um, and you know, people seem to be liking that, and uh, it just allows me to upload a video on the restoration and all the positive feedback that I'm seeing. It just makes me really happy. Now, the reason I haven't been posting a lot is that I've been really busy in my personal life, and um, I don't expect that to change anytime soon. But what I'm hoping is that soon I'll reach a thousand subscribers and what that allows me is to uh, post things uh, on the community channel so I can show little pictures um, up there of things that I'm working on um, the, pretty much the way I do on my Twitter as well now there's a little plug but I'll post somewhere up here and I'll put it down in the description as well. I'll post my Twitter link. Um, if you follow me there, I, I, you're usually more up to date on things that I'm doing. Um, for this one, for example, uh, I've been making a, a shell for the AV booster, but I'll talk about that in, uh, I think I'll do that in a separate video to this. Um, but, you know, in all honesty, just, a huge thanks to everyone for supporting me for all that time. So now that's all out of the way, let's have a look at this one. And this is the TurboGrafx-16. It's the American version of the PC Engine that came out uh, in Japan, which is a lot smaller. I think it's about the size of the backside of this thing. Um, and the AV booster that we've got here, I've been building a little, um, a shell for it that both fits the PC Engine and the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see what it's going to look like, but basically the idea behind it was to make it look like a mini IFU or the interface unit that the PC Engine has. So in order to do this smart, <laughs> I think our plan of attack is going to be before we hook it up to power and TV at all to see what it does. We're going to open it up and we're going to measure things around. So I want to see whether or not somebody used the wrong polarity on this. Um, by default, this uses centered negative, which isn't very common. So it could well be that it was plugged in the wrong way and maybe the um, the, the power transistor got you know burned down uh, or something like that. Um, just want to make sure that there's no shorts anywhere. If I can't immediately detect any shorts, I'm going to apply some power to it. Um, and I guess I might as well hook it up to the TV, um, but just see what it does and start measuring things as well. Now, it just so happens that it recently had been my birthday, um, was July 1st, and my girlfriend got me a new multimeter. So this gives me a great opportunity to go and try that out. Uh, I'm, I'm quite excited about that. So yeah, let's tear this one open and have a look. Uh, I'll see what we, can, what we can uncover. Hopefully it's easy, could be quite difficult. Who knows? So 
So that's something I didn't quite expect. Um, it seems that the RF shield to this thing is actually soldered onto the main board. So uh, if you, uh, if this thing focuses, yeah, focus, not out of focus. Yeah, there you go. You can see there's all these tabs around that have been soldered onto the main board. So it's gonna take a little longer to get into this. Um, I'll go and grab my soldering iron, grab some soldering wick, get rid of all that, and then I'll get back when, when I'm actually in this thing. All right, so I took off the, um, the shielding and we're left with the main board. Now, I'm, I know that the 7805s on these are notoriously bad, um, so yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I just want to check some of the, the power stuff around here. Um, let's start by measuring the, the diode, see what we get on the fuse, and then have a look at the, um, the transistor here. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, this is my new uh, multimeter, and uh, it, it's actually pretty cool. So if I turn it into specific mode, it actually shows with LEDs where to put your probes. I think that's kind of cool. So right now I'm in uh, ohms or resistance mode. And um, let's start actually by going into the, um, oh, what do you call that? Uh, BP mode? <laughs> I, words are sometimes difficult. I'm, I'm going to check the fuse and see if it uh, beeps out, if we, if, if there's anything blown, or if the the line itself is completely connected. So, um, yeah. So, fuse still, still seems okay. Um, the diode. So I'm going to check. Well, let's go into diode mode. That might help. Here we go, so we're in diode mode. Let's see, what the, does the diode itself say? Half a volt, yep, the other way around. Yeah, diode seems all right. It doesn't let any power through from, or going back, so. That's all good. Um, let's check resistance on the uh, on the 7805. So the middle pin is ground. Um, I'm just going to use any ground for that. Um, see if we get anything on input. This is, oh, let me probe that correctly. So that's nine mega ohm. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's good. Um, let's see on output. What does that give us? Ooh, 139 ohms. That seems a little low. Now I'm always suspicious of these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that just to be on the safe side. The NEC 70805s are, as I mentioned, notorious for, you know, going bad um, what happens is they 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 blow internally but they create a short instead of going open so that's just gonna put all the power coming in without you know without doing anything with it it's just gonna dump it straight out and that goes straight to your CPU your whatever uh, and that that's what's gonna kill things so just to be on the safe side I'm gonna go ahead and replace this for a more modern solution package and that can handle a bit more power uh, conversion. So it's just gonna, I think it can go up to like 24 volts and it'll still output a steady five volt. Um, and while we're at it, there is a uh, coupling capacitor here. Now if these do uh, short, this usually gets cooked as well. So it's a good thing just to keep in mind uh, to replace that as well um, and I think what we can do is replace that replace that uh, and at that point I think we're pretty much 
pretty much safe to plug it in and see what we're going to get on screen. So I'm going to go replace these uh, and hook it up and see you guys back. So I've partially reassembled it. Um, I have been replacing these bits that I was talking about earlier. So uh, we've got the new uh, power transistor and a new smoothing capacitor in here. Uh, I have the old ones, they are right here. Um, yeah, I took those out, replaced it. Now, I was talking about the, um, the resistance earlier and let me show you because um, I think this, this is quite a good thing to show on camera. Um, let me measure the resistance on the output of the power transistor. It's again 138 ohms. That's me moving the probe around a bit, but yeah, so uh, that didn't change. And actually it turned out to be a red herring. Um, that value, that's perfectly fine. Uh, when I noticed that, uh, I talked to my friend and he actually had a couple of PC engines around and um, he measured the ones that he has out for me and he got 144 ohms on a PC engine, 180 on a Duo R and 330 on another Duo R. So yeah, that that's perfectly fine. Now that made me realize that, um, first of all, I was chasing the wrong thing. Having replaced the, the regulator uh, is not a bad thing at all. Uh, I did mention before that the, the original in there, it's pretty much a fire hazard. So uh, upgrading and replacing that for something more modern is a good thing. And I just happen to have a stock of them uh, that I've bought uh, from console 5. So these are, let me double check, I think it's the LS, the L78S05 something. I'll, I'll post a link in the description to these. Um, but what I'm basically coming at is I think this machine might be fine. So I was thinking about it a bit and um, what what can have happened is that because this didn't come with anything, no controller, no cables, nothing. It's just a console, and the uh, uh, they they said it doesn't work, and that's it. So either they may not have had the right items at hand to test it. Um, that's one consideration. The other is there might be something wrong in the RF module and yeah, I really don't care about that. I, I've got the little expansion, the AV booster board, um, as you can see right here. So I can either run this through composite or RGB. Um, so I don't care about RF if that's broken, fine. Uh, or the other thing is that it might be working, the RF modulator, but let me move this out of the way. Might be able to show this on the RF modulator. Uh, it's not really focusing, but basically there is a switch here that changes from channel three to channel four or the other way around. And it's set, it was set to, let me double check. It was set to channel four and um, maybe they just didn't flip it to channel three and the TV they tried it out on wasn't supported. Because otherwise, looking at this board, it, it looks pretty clean. I can't see anything on here. I looked through my, my microscope um, and I can't find any broken traces. Uh, I think it's gonna be fine. Um, so I'm going to partially reassemble it. I won't screw it back down yet, but I'm going to put the uh, whole RF shield and everything back because this design is quite weird. Let me show you because we're looking at the board right now the way you'd normally look at it. And this would be up, right? Because that's where all the components are. Well, on a TurboGrafx-16, you flip it around. This is the tops out. 
top side. So basically that means that all the components are hanging downwards, I guess, or at least they're facing the opposite way from what I'd expect. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put the bottom, yeah, put the bottom back here uh, and find some power, uh, plug it in, put the AV booster on. Uh, I only happen to have a uh, comp composite cable here, um, but I'll try and dig out the RGB cable later so we can test and verify that. Uh, and then hook it up and see what we're gonna get. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna assemble it and set set it up with the uh, television. All right, so moment of truth. <laughs> I tried getting a little artsy in the uh, setup here. So we have the turbo graphics here and you can see the uh, compute the computer. <laughs> I mean the, the, the TV in, in the back. I'm gonna plug in the power. Let's hope nothing explodes. So far, so good. So let's see what happens if we turn it on. I get nothing. Interesting. So this thing should be good. I don't know. Let's uh, open it up and see what we can find. Oh, let's have a little laugh, shall we? Um, let me pan and tilt the camera a bit so I can show you what I'm talking about. But I've got this uh, Turbo EverDrive, right? That I can set to TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine. I had it set correctly, but I had the micro SD card in there. So, as you do, obviously. So I put that in. Now when I, I think this might be because it's uh, not fully assembled yet and the tolerances are a little off oof uh, yeah so focus the tolerances are a little off if I turn it on you can see it barely hits the SD card but it stops it from sliding further so if I push the SD card in a little bit and turn it on then, as you can see, it's working. Uh, and this one is actually flashed to, uh, come on, focus, focus over there, come on. Yep, it's flashed to work without a SD card as well. So if I take this out, that's really annoying, the reflective bit. Sorry about that. But anyway, you can see the LED. I turn it on. Yep. Look at that. It's working just fine. So yeah, that confirms what I was thinking, right? So they either didn't have the, te the stuff to test or had it set to a wrong channel because this is running over RCA, over uh, composite video, and it looks fine to me. I mean, I think the screen is squashed, but I don't have the uh, the controller, the remote with me here. But yeah, this is it's working great. So let me turn that off. Let me show you back here. Um, I think all in all, because I got this really cheaply, uh, I have a great deal. Uh, just replace some bits that I would have replaced regardless if I'd bought a new one or a working one off of eBay. And um, yeah, it's working perfectly fine now. Um, I did create, and I mentioned this before, I did create a little um, a housing for the uh, AV booster that's in the back. Because <laughs> as you can see, that's floating around merrily just, yeah, it's not that pretty. Um, so I designed something for that that actually looks like the uh, interface unit. I'll be printing and modifying that as it needs soon. And I'll actually make a separate video on that next. But for now, yeah, again, I have a working TurboGrafx. 
Oh man, I'm so excited. There's so many games that I want to play now. Uh, but I actually only have a PC Engine controller, so this is using the big DIN version, and that's a small DIN, so I still can't play anything right now. I'll order one up uh, and just to complete the whole thing. Man, I'm so happy about this. Uh, I think actually uh, I'm not going to end the video just yet because it works, you know. Um, but there's some really small scratches and things on the case that you can see here. And if I tilt this a bit, sorry about the study camera, but you know, there's little marks, little dents. So uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and give this a good clean um, and maybe use something to make it shine again. Uh, and once all that's done, fully reassemble it, because I still need to solder in the RF shield tabs, or need to solder that back in. Um, and then do a full reassembly and, and get to the final result. And we'll talk, a, we'll talk about things a bit more over there. See you in a bit. Oh boy, this turned out great. I'm so excited to show this. Look at that. Uh, I spent about an hour and a half yesterday trying to clean everything up. Um, so what I did, uh, at first I used a degreaser to get rid of all the dirt uh, from all the crevices. Then uh, I ended up, well, uh, first of all, I, um, I rinsed it off with water. And uh, next I added some uh, pledge, plastic pledge or dashboard cleaner. I, I guess it's called, and um, I've been circling that in with a microfiber cloth uh, just to make the, uh, get every every piece of dirt from out of each of these little graphics, out of logos, out of uh, everything. Then I rinsed it down again, and uh, I ended up applying some back to black uh, at the at the very end, and that got the uh, the sheen of the console itself back. Now my focus has been shit, um, but yeah, under certain lighting conditions, you can see, like over here, you can see some some minor blemishes. But other than that, I think it looks great, and I am really, really happy with the result. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> try and get me a controller for this one so I can actually play games. That'd be cool, right? Um, again, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, I'm gonna hopefully keep adding more content, but just bear with me. I'm, I'm doing the best with the time I have. Uh, I have another video that's coming up. I've been buying uh, consoles and uh, for repairs on the channel. However, you know, uh, I'm trying to get to uh, a thousand followers so that I can actually post pictures of things that will be coming on my YouTube as well. So if you can help me out by leaving either a like or, you know, a dislike, it doesn't matter either way, the algorithm will pick it up uh, so that more people can see the content I'm working on. The, fur the, the sooner I get to a thousand subscribers, the sooner I'll have access to the community tab. Now, uh, I have the next video planned. It's going to be, it, it's likely going to be super easy as well. Uh, similar to this one, that seems to be a recurring theme. But uh, on the other hand, that does mean that I'll have more content up soon. So I hope you enjoyed this. I did uh, a lot. And uh, I hope to see you again next time.